brought some traditional liquid fuel. For as an American, I feel, presumably as part of my birthright, that I'm always to be granted liquid fuel at low cost. Without that low cost, I presume to make political and societal agitation. <laughs> Those costs, however, environmental, strategic, policy, behavioral, future, uh, are substantial. And as an American, I'm increasingly wondering if it might not be time for, uh, for some change. Change the topic at hand that informs so many of us, that informs this meeting, change a form of alchemy, changing from carbon emitting, large vested interest, curiously priced, politically destabilizing traditional liquid transportation fuels. <laughs> change to what we call biofuels to augment renewable liquid transportation fuels traditionally biodiesel or ethanol. I'm suggesting a change might be at hand and I'm going to tell you how to make biofuels. That's terrifying isn't it? That's going to sound geeky. But we're going to make it through a kind of alchemy as represented up here. For making biofuels in a place requires a movement from vision through landscape to civic and societal implications. Nothing less. There is nothing easy about making alternatives to petroleum-based fuels. It is in fact remarkably complicated to do so for the life of this place. And we are all in the business of place changing and place thinking, aren't we? Remarkably complicated. Uh, why is that? Let's think about case making, place changing in the future. Biofuels reveals to us a case study in nothing less than moving vision to reality, which is the largest task any of us have. Moving vision to reality. It's a case study. It's a case study for changing and improving a place. It is a primer for changing and improving a place. Biofuels is revelatory of the challenge of improving and changing a place, the responsibility for changing and improving a place, the reality of changing and improving a place. Why is that so hard in North Carolina to affect societal change through biofuels? I'm going to move through a sequence of ways of thinking, an alarming gestalt of lots of information, not technical. Let's start with questioning vision. Uh, how do we think on a daily basis about societal challenges, about our societal future, about technology, about the environment, about energy? Those are large. About biofuels, that's increasing. How do we think about the largest question in changing and improving a place that always starts with vision? And vision must move to reality, which means outcomes. So if we're going to change and improve a place, uh, how about this place, North Carolina? Then we are impelled to have a, a movement from vision, vision. I can just imagine. How about let's do, let's to smart thinking. For vision is inchoate without a disciplined framework for thinking. Uh, then we have to commit to our thinking and commit to our outcomes. And then if we are a state, we must have policy. For good intentions alone don't take root without policy. Hard that also. And then, unless we flail, we need a process for outcomes. This is what we mostly all do without knowing it on a daily basis. But the challenge is compounded if we are a place and a state. Harder yet in a nation, have you noticed? So if all of these come about together, this is cohesive and integrated thinking. And that kind of thinking is required for societal leadership and it is required for societal change. I presume societal change can come from biofuels. How might that be? Well, let's think about that in relation to the sovereign state of North Carolina. Societal change from biofuels began with vision. In 2007, state leaders determined that this state would gain large capacity and benefit, environmental, strategic, and economic, from a new biofuels endeavor. Remarkably, 90 persons shaped a strategic plan. That's what states do. They make plans. Smart thinking was made manifest. 
The state determined through legislative, executive, and institutional leadership that movement to alternative liquid fuels merited the attention of North Carolina, and policy was created in place to commit to long-term gain from this endeavor. The expected gain to our energy, agriculture, economy, and rural places into the environment was expected to be large. And our state set up a goal that by 2017, we want 10% of our state's liquid fuels to come from biofuels. 10% will be 500 million gallons. Picture 100 million of these. That's what, we want. That's what we want to do in North Carolina by 2017. We will not base our biofuels endeavor on corn. There are reasons for that. We're impelled for other substances to make 500 million gallons. How does a state change? It starts from, in this case, no resources and no capabilities. Ground zero, Zipsville, for this new sector. So our strategy is to create a new sector, community resources, capability, and leadership through a disciplined process for outcomes, a comprehensive, realistic framework is required to change this place through biofuels. So how do you do that? Second alchemical process. What's the process of technology? For that must inform how we think. Technology development is a process. It's a continuum. It moves from need to outcome, from vision to outcome, from vision to product. Now, this stage has three main, this process has three main stages. We discover, develop, apply something. These are roughly in society the stages of moving science through industry to society. It's complex. It takes time. It moves through some interrelated stages. We start with societal need. <gasps> Let's augment our dependence on traditional petroleum fuels. And then we have policy and we have goals. Science and research are the triggers. We move promising technology out to companies and products. We've heard some of that today. We have commitment of participants, a new community. We consider products. Can we make renewable liquid fuels? Companies, new or existing, are involved. We must have sustained investment, lots of investment, not just of money, but a policy and passion as well. Different currencies. We do testing, we do trials, we have companies use, we produce, manufacture, grow, we have distribution, use by existing sectors or companies. A little bit wrinkly when we're dealing with the vested petroleum industry, but we'll return to that. Then we have outcomes. Now, many participants are required to move along a technological community. We have researchers, we have universities, we have startup, other companies. We have entrepreneurs, investors, we have regulators, we have larger companies, we have other sectors, we have trained workers, manufacturers, growers, service providers, schools, educators, ethicists, if we're dealing with the change of the environment and life. Thoughtful critics. Participatory public interest groups, catalysts, smart governments, good policy makers, persons unafraid of imagination are as key as any. And then, of course, that means all of us on a daily basis, our participants in technology change. Now, we've got this grouping of stuff, participant stages, very complicated. It is the world of technology for any technology. The key point is simple. In this process and in this world, we must create a technology, or a technology cluster, or a technology community, or a technology endeavor, or in the case of my thinking, a biofuels endeavor. <coughs> now, understanding biofuels as technology impels some important recognitions. It's long-term, it takes time, it's risky, it's costly, it's complicated, it arouses issues. <coughs> First, the outcomes are there's some setbacks, there's some issues, there are wrinkles, decisions, it doesn't always go well. A technology yields vision made manifest if it works. It yields products, benefit, environmental, economic, societal, personal. It yields change. In my case, in our case, it's going to yield millions of gallons of new fuel. And a technology is unfailingly also dependent on something, a mobile phone, a chip a new pharmaceutical, a protein. In this case, biofuels is dependent on what we call feedstocks and biomass, stuff in the main, from the land, but also waste taken to make new fuels. It requires enormous amounts of land and requires production facilities, large or small. 
Now, a technology also unfailingly merges stuff. In this case, we are merging in a new way land, stuff from the land, and expensive up-to-the-moment production technology. Curiously, we are merging the world's first technology, agriculture, around which civilization was built, with extraordinarily complicated new technology to break down feedstocks into liquid fuel. And if you think the task of converting wood to something in this is easy, you're wrong. <laughs> A technology also overlaps or abrades. Abrading, large steam locomotives went away, now we have other stuff. Abrading. Uh, horses largely went away, now we have vehicles. Overlapping, uh, computers and cell telephones and cameras. That movement is extraordinarily important when we're affecting some movement from this to this. For we are confronting and overlapping and abrading with 100 years of single source fuels and the largest vested interest industry on the face of the planet. But actually, although it looks as though the task is unequal, it's going fairly well for the petroleum industry, in part responding to national mandates as accommodating biofuels. Landscape changing. If we're going to take enormous amounts of land and feedstock and biomass, enormous, then we're going to have impact on the state of North Carolina. So picture our state. We're well suited to gain different feedstocks in varied regions. Uh, how about some energy grasses over there? How about wood over there? Uh, how about waste materials over there? Each of these areas uh, is the catchment area for a biofuels production facility. And we will yield in time a landscape filled with growing and production based on different crops and sources around the state, peppering North Carolina in a new way. And this, in fact, yields the capability for local production, responsible, possible, and culturally consonant, local food, local, local energy. Impact, new uses of land and new crops will be enormously significant across North Carolina. A first significant planned production facility in Sampson County will, get this, require to produce 20 million gallons of ethanol, 300,000 dry tons of stuff each year, day and night. And that will take 20 to 30,000 acres. Whoa, that sounds hard. Is it any harder than this? Or is it any more challenging or any more risky than that? This is Unprecedented and landscape changing. What if we want to make 500 million gallons? By extrapolation just of that facility, we will take 500,000 acres of North Carolina and make 7.5 million tons of stuff. There are decisions, issues, and implications here. Consequential. For societal change and the movement from these fuels comes not without consequences and implications. Because technologies and new sectors, particularly if they involve land or living organisms, uh, cannot be envisioned or shaped in the void. They take place in a place, here's our place, North Carolina. And places yield context, values, different ways to apply technology. Here's a short roster of the issues at hand for biofuels. Environmental impact, land use and landscape, introduction of new crops, some potentially invasive. Mm. Food versus fuel, a kind of made-up issue. Forest versus fuel, of some consequence. Biotechnology, as we alter plants. Resource use and inputs, what about all the stuff it's going to take to grow all this stuff? Water and carbon footprints, vehicle efficiency and impact, merging with the petroleum industry. Quantifying environmental gain, we know that this stuff is better than that. But it's not an easy quantification. How about bringing growers and our landowners to new behaviors and to new gain? How about ensuring true and verifiable sustainability? How about also at hand placement within comprehensive energy policy? You heard from Brian today and others about other aspects of energy. How do we put them together? How do we balance the risks of biofuels with continued large reliance on carbon emitting petroleum fuels? There's no risk-free answer to energy. 
And most important, how do we recognize again historically the fact that ultimately as humans we are dependent on the land and agriculture for everything. We had a little digression in the last century where we could propel our vehicles and make lots of materials from petroleum. We're back to the land. In total, we have a shaping of new or unprecedented issues necessarily to be shaped and somehow balanced. This is remarkably complicated because we are presuming carefully and thoughtfully to take from our land in the context of this state the application of a technology process and we're going to gain something societal and civic in impact. Did we know that? Look what is at hand to take us from this to this. We're going to have impact on science, research, biotechnology, on technology, on technology transfer, entrepreneurs, new and multinational companies, farmers and farms, forests and growers, agriculture, infrastructure and equipment, landowners, workforce preparation, schools and colleges, competitiveness, the $16 billion we spend every year buying fuel from different places. You did that today. Production, large and small, distribution, investment, economic development, rural gain, consumer behavior, state and national policy, transportation capabilities, the environment, climate, land and land use policy, towns and waste policy, use and value of waste. It's not waste anymore. The reality of these big muffy words, sustainable and renewable, hard. Large issues are at hand, varied partnerships, the existing petroleum sector, international interactions, the nature of agriculture, the reality of new local. And energy, the without which nothing for our future. Energy, culture, we're Americans, car culture, vision, life, future, energy future. When we extract from that list key components, we have the main components of civic life involved just in the making of new fuels, from technology to energy, civic and societal impact, landscape changing. Securing energy is always landscape changing, as is changing and improving a place, a society, or a future. Making new fuels makes new places. Thanks.